Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome again to Chapter 5 Chemical Bonding. We continue with Lesson 29 Intermolecular Forces. Today we are going to learn about the two types of van der Waals forces and the factors that influence them. Intermolecular forces are attractive forces between molecules. It's much weaker than covalent bonds. The strength of intermolecular forces determine the physical properties of the substances, for example, the boiling and melting point. Attractive forces between neutral molecules are van der Waals forces and hydrogen bond. The two van der Waals forces are permanent dipole and London. The strongest intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding followed by permanent dipole and followed by London dispersion forces. Dipole-dipole forces exist between neutral polar molecules, for example, in 5.26 HCl molecule. So you can see here, there is one molecule and one molecule of HCl, a linear. You can see the electropositive part is at hydrogen atom and the electronegative part is at Cl atom, chlorine. So the dot 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 line is representing the dipole dipole forces. And another diagram here, the green light is the dipole-dipole forces. So if you want to draw it again, because you need to write this in your book, okay, draw HCl, okay, and then uh, here is a Cl and here is a H. So you can uh, draw the dot, 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 dot between the H and Cl and also this dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. So here is your dipole dipole forces. So as the ones that is here and also here. Uh, here is the orientation of a polar molecule in a solid. You can see that the positive part is at the side of the negative part in the red circle there. So the dipole-dipole forces would be inside the red circle. The strength of the dipole-dipole forces depends on the dipole moment of the molecule, the one that we calculate and predicted previously in the polarity of molecule. The more polar the molecule, the stronger the dipole-dipole forces, for example, the dipole-dipole forces in hydrogen chloride are stronger than in hydrogen bromide because chlorine is more electronegative than Br. The second type of van der Waals forces is London dispersion forces. It exists in all atoms and molecules, whether they are polar or nonpolar. Nonpolar molecules would not seem to have any basis for attractive interactions. But at any instant, one side of the molecule has higher electron density, while the other side would have a lower electron density. At this instant, the atoms or molecules become a small instantaneous dipole. Then it will induce a dipole on the neighboring atom and molecule. Due to electron repulsion, a temporary dipole on one atom can induce a similar dipole on a neighboring atom, causing the neighboring atoms to be attracted to one another. This interaction is called London dispersion force and significant when the atoms are close together. Let's look at example 5.27 regarding helium atoms. We need to draw the helium atoms under the influence of London forces. So first, we draw one helium atom. 
a helium atom has two electrons. So, in a natural condition, the electron would be far apart from each other. But let's say we have a drop of water coming through here. Oxygen, H, and then there would be an electron over here. What happened is, this electron from a drop of water will induce this part, this particular part, to become electropositive. And this part, the electron will come here. The two electrons will come here. This is the electronegative part. So what happened to the helium atom next to it? This is another helium atom. This is going to be the electropositive part because this electron is going to repulse the electron from the neighboring atom like this. Ah, so this is how you got the instantaneous dipole whereby it will induce the dipole forces on the neighboring atom. Here is another example on a molecule A and B of the hydrogen gas. So you can see on the left side here, it is a negatively charged, negative part, electronegative part. And here it would become electropositive part. And what happened is the neighboring atom here is going to become negative also on this side because it is side by side with the positive part. Right, let's do practice 5.10 together. The question is, what types of intermolecular forces exist between each of the following molecules and explain? HBr is a polar molecule, so it would have dipole-dipole forces. London dispersion forces also exist between the molecules. SO2 is a polar molecule. It has dipole-dipole moment and dipole-dipole forces. Therefore, they also exists London dispersion forces. You can see here the SO2 molecule has a lone pair, band shape, so it is polar. What about the last one, CH4? CH4 is a non-polar molecule. It is symmetrical shape. So it only has London dispersion forces. There are three factors that influence the strength of van der Waals forces. Number one is molecular size, followed by molecular shape, and then molecular polarity. Atoms or molecules that have bigger size would have a larger contact surface area. Therefore, they would have a stronger van der Waals forces. Molecular size depends on molecular mass. So, if you can see, the table 5.4 boiling points of noble gases you can see that the helium the smallest gas would have the lowest boiling points and the biggest gas radon is having the highest boiling point so fill in your table to see whether molecular mass de, uh, determine the molecular size. The second factor that determines the strength of van der Waals forces is the molecular shape. If the shape is a longer and a thinner molecule, 
it would have a larger contact surface area, so it can develop bigger temporary dipoles. This is due to the electron movement. Compared to molecules that are relatively shorter and fatter because they have chain. Although they have and contain the same numbers of electrons. For example, in your table 5.5, we can compare between two molecules, butane and two methylpropane. They have the same number of carbon and hydrogen, therefore they have the same number of electron. But the electron movement would be different between the two molecules. Butane would have a higher boiling point because the dispersion forces between the molecules are greater. The molecules are longer, so it would set up a bigger temporary dipoles and it can lie closer together compared to a shorter and fatter 2-methylpropane molecules. The third factor that influences the strength of a van der Waals forces is molecular polarity. We want to compare between ethane, CH3CH3 and fluoromethane, CH3F, because they are having almost the same molecular mass. So it turns out that the boiling point of ethane is lower than the boiling point of fluoromethane. Why? Because ethane, CH3CH3, is a nonpolar molecule, whereas fluoromethane is a polar molecule. Nonpolar molecule ethane would have only London dispersion forces, weaker than the fluoromethane, which have permanent dipole and also London. In general, we can say that polar molecules have permanent dipole, therefore it is having a stronger intermolecular forces compared to nonpolar molecule, which has only London dispersion forces. Therefore, the boiling point of polar molecules would be higher. Both molecules of methane and fluoromethane have identical numbers of electrons, therefore almost similar molecular mass. Higher boiling point of fluoromethane is due to the large permanent dipole on the molecule because of the high electronegativity of fluorine. Another comparison is between trichloromethane and tetrachloromethane. You can see that in trichloromethane, the one and only hydrogen that is bonded to the central atom carbon making the compound polar. With that, it would have a dipole-dipole forces. But since hydrogen is much less uh, weight than Cl, it would have a lower boiling point compared to tetrachloromethane, which has much higher molecular mass, even though it has um, London dispersion forces. Although the molecule is classified as polar molecule, the boiling point is still depending greatly on the molecular size as the most important factor. So trichloromethane would have a lower boiling point compared to tetrachloromethane since the molecular size of CCL4 is higher, making it have stronger van der Waals forces, needing higher energy to break the bond. Thank you very much for watching and listening. The next part would be hydrogen bonding. See you soon. Assalamualaikum.